Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 11, Lesson 3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Graphing. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve quadratic equations by graphing. Let's learn solving quadratic equations by graphing. The rest of this module is going to be how to solve a quadratic function. There are many different ways, and graphing is going to be the first way we're going to look at. With the help of graphing technology like Desmos, we can also use this method to check to see if we're getting the right answers when we do it the other ways later. So first, a quadratic equation can be written in its standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, but when we're solving, we're going to write equals zero at the end. And in this, a just cannot be zero. b and c still can be zero, just not a, as we saw before. So because these graphs, once we do it, are going to have zero, one, or two zeros, what that means by zero here, it means we're going to have either one, two, or none zeros if we plug in a number for x where it equals zero. Then when we graph it, we'll either have zero, one, or two solutions. So if we're looking at our graphs, our key concept here is the solutions of quadratic equations. When we graph it, we can see how many solutions there are based on how many times it crosses the x-axis. So this one has two unique real solutions. We can see because it crosses here twice. Those are the zeros. That's when y is equal to zero. Whatever that x value is when y is zero. So here it crossed twice. The middle one, it touches the x-axis and then it goes right back in the direction it came. So it only really hits the x-axis once. And then this one, we can see the x-axis is down here, but this is up here, so it never crosses or even touches the x-axis. It's gonna have no solutions. And then with this middle one, with one real solution, this is also called a double root, because both of the things that work, if you remember back when we were factoring quadratic trinomials, you usually got two answers, you usually had two binomials, both of them are in the same place, so this is called a double root, because it has the same zero, both times. Example one, solve a quadratic equation with two roots. So solve negative x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals 0 by graphing. So let's graph the related function f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. To do that, let's head over to Desmos. So here I have our thing typed in. I am not going to type in the equals 0 part because it doesn't make the parabola that I want. It does make two lines, but if I don't type it in, then I can't see my parabola. So I want to type it without the equals. Then in Desmos, you can just click on your zeros, and you can also click on your y-intercept and vertex. So the ones we're going to focus on for our solutions are the zeros. So if we had our graph, here's just a picture of it. Our x-intercepts were here and here at negative 1 and 5. So those are your solutions, negative 1 and 5. Now, we would want to write it as x equals negative 1, since we're solving for x here, and x equals 5. If we were to plug those values back in, negative 1 and 5, those are what would give us 0. So if we test out just 5, for example, 5 times 5 is 25, make it negative. Plus 4 times 5 would be 20, so I'd be at negative 5, plus 5, and back to 0. Plugging in 5 gives us 0, same with plugging in negative 1. Check your understanding, graph the function shown, and determine what the solutions are. You may use graphing technology such as Desmos if you need to. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that the solutions are at negative 3 and negative 2. If you graph it, it looks like this. We can see our two values. So negative 2 is here, negative 3 is here. Those are your solutions. And again, we would want to write it x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. Example 2. Solve a quadratic equation with a double root. So let's solve x squared minus 8x equals negative 16 by graphing. First, what we're going to need to do, we're going to rewrite this in standard form. So I don't want this negative 16 over on that. I need it over on the same side as x squared so that it's in the format for me to graph. So I'm going to do that by adding 16 to both sides. And then I end up with x squared minus 8x plus 16. And then this would really just be equal 0 because I now have nothing on the right. I'm just going to graph x squared minus 8x plus 16. And it would look like this. Notice the vertex is on the x-intercept. So this makes it the only solution. That is at 4. It also makes it a double root. So this would be 4. And the other solution would also be 4 but we really just say it once. It's just a double root. Example three, solve a quadratic equation with no real roots. If we graph this, it looks something like this. We can see our vertex is here and it's going downward away from our x-axis, which is up here. So this has no x-intercepts and never crosses the x-axis. So this one would have no solution. This is another reason why it's important if you're using Desmos to not type in that equals zero. Here's why it's helpful to not type that equals zero in. So notice if I don't type it in, again, I can see the parabola that it made. This time though, if I type in equals zero, there's nothing there. 
And I don't want you to think that you made a mistake by typing in the equals zero. There's just nothing there because there's no solution. So if you type it in with the parabola, you can easily see that it never crosses the x-axis. And it's just because there's no solution, not that you did anything wrong. So don't type that equals zero when you're graphing. Example four, approximate roots of quadratic functions. Our real context here is baseball. In 1941, the Boston Red Sox's Ted Williams hit a baseball 172 meters. The hit would later be registered as the longest home run ever hit at the team's home field, Fenway Park. The function h equals negative 16t squared plus 105t plus 1.5 models the height of the baseball, h, in meters after t seconds. If it falls to the ground, approximately how long would the baseball be in the air? So we need to find the roots to find when it would hit the ground, right? The x-axis is usually the ground, so when that hits the ground, if we can find the zeros, then we'll be able to approximate how long it will take. Here though, they're calling it the t-intercept because we are using our t-value instead of x and then height for h instead of y. If we were to graph this, we would notice that the t-value when the ball hits the ground would be between six and seven. Yes, I know we could just use Desmos and click on the point and find the exact time, but here's how to do it without. So if we plug in values, so let's say 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, we're just testing out all these time values for t, we would end up with different heights. Now, we wanna know when it hits the ground. So this ball was going up in the air, and then it's going back down. At some point, it's gonna hit the ground, but the graph would theoretically keep going. So the value of the height is gonna switch from positive to negative. So if we can find that spot, that will tell us about when it hits the ground. So if we're looking through these, we have 27.9, it's going down to 18.14, down again to eight. Here is our spot where it switched from positive eight to negative 2.46. So it must have hit the ground somewhere between there. Now, when we're approximating, we can just pick whichever one's closest. So the closest to zero is that negative 2.46. It's only that amount away compared to eight away. So the ball must have been in the air about 6.6 .6 seconds before hitting the ground. If we want to use Desmos to figure out exactly when it hits the ground, we can type our function in. Remember, it doesn't like letters other than X and Y for the most part. So instead of T, let's change it back to X. Then we can see our parabola. We're going to have to zoom out to see how far up it goes. Our vertex, it got all the way up to 173 feet. And if we're zooming in on our zeros to see when it hits the ground, it's going up and then back down. Where did it hit the ground? 6.577 was the exact. So between 6.5 and 6.6, .6, this is closer to 6.657 would round up. So if we want the exact value, we can come here to Desmos, but we can always just approximate and see when does it change signs from positive to negative. And that was the important part here, right? Where it went from the positive height to negative theoretical height.